So thank you for being here. Uh, I'm supposed to speak English with uh, whatever accent I can. I'm sorry for, for this. Um, so the goal of, of the lectures is to explain um, the use of Arakalov geometry to prove theorems in Diophantine geometry, especially Bogomolov's conjecture. And uh, so probably Bogomolov's conjecture will be the topic of the last talk. Uh, and, uh, but just for the moment, say that this, this conjecture has been proved by Ulmo and Zhang using uh, Necri distribution theorem. I mean, the properties of, about the distribution of algebraic points of small height on some varieties. And this equidistribution property is the main topic of the, of the course until I can reach the Bogomolov conjecture. So first, of all, first uh, I will have to recall you what, how heights are defined in Arakalov geometry. Uh, I tried to check with the lecture notes of past week and there is very little overlap with what I need. So <laughs> I will essentially start from scratch. Um, and so, so explain, uh, explain this. And then uh, you will have to trust me for a moment. Uh, but as a matter of fact, our kind of geometry is not sufficient to explain, but to, to construct all heights that are used in Diophantine geometry, especially for the neurontate height. In case of bad reduction, one needs to, to twist a little bit uh, the theory and to enlarge it a little bit. So I, I will also ex explain that. And then uh, from that point on, uh, I will pass to extrusion, and then finally the of conjecture. So let's start with, uh, with heights. So, um, for, for the moment, we will start with some such objects. So, we take uh, a scheme, curly x, which, which, which will, will be proper and flat over spec z. In some cases, you want to take uh, objects which live over, which we start from objects which live over a number field, and then the the first rule is to extend it over the ring of integers of the number field, uh, which we, you can always do. For example, if you start from a projective variety, then it is explicitly given by, by family of equations with coefficient in some number field. And that what you have to do is to, to just take these equations and remove denominators and take the projective schemes with the same equations. If you started, well, if, very likely, the, the scheme that you will reach that way will not be flat. It will be projective, but not flat, because some, some for example, you could take the equation 2x equals 0, and then in, in the fiber of 2, you've got uh, something too big, so too big to be flat. But then it's very easy to, to remove this non-flat locus. You take the closure of the generic fiber, and, and you get something which is flat. And so uh, I will. Uh, takes this notation, if p is an integer, I will de denote by z of x, the uh, Abelian group of uh, p cycles on x, which are just are uh, uh, formal sums of integral closed subschemes of dimension p. And uh, maybe it's interesting to say uh, for the moment, if, if you take such a scheme, so what, what name should I take? Well, I say z. If you take z in x, integral closed. And then you have two possibilities. Uh, a 
according to the, the, the so if uh, either uh, z is surjective over spec z, and then we say that z is horizontal, or uh, if f of z does, is not equal to spec z, uh, since f is proper and z is closed, f of z is, is uh, integral and closed in, in spec z. So if it does not contain the, either it contains the generic point of spec z, then it's spec z, the whole of spec z, or it is contained in a, in a, spe in a, in a special fiber. So there exists, or there exists a prime number P such that Z is contained in the special fiber of FP. So, and then we say that Z is vertical. So how to, how to construct uh, vertical cycles? That's very easy. You fix uh, call, uh, a prime number P and you take uh, integral clause of schemes of dimension P, dimension, maybe I should not write P for the dimension of the G. And you take integral clause cycles in this honest algebraic variety of uh, FP, in the same dimension, or uh, you want to construct an horizontal clause cycles. And then what you do is you take for Z, the Zariski closure, the Zariski closure of the generic fiber in, uh, in, in, in X, and this ZQ is uh, uh, G minus one dimensional integral closed subscheme. And so that's the two ways to, to describe. So horizontal cycles, for the moment, will be viewed uh, uh, cycles, but it's very important to, to understand that they, they come from. Sorry. Yes? No, it cannot, because f of z, f is proper, so f of z is integral and closed. It's, it's the image of an irreducible uh, scheme is irreducible, and uh, by, uh, under a proper morphism, the image of a closed subscheme is closed. So we ha I have something which is... Instead of several primes, it's also closed. No, it's closed, but it's not, it's not irreducible. <laughs> so it, it's forced to be contained in a single prime number. So, uh, and so, so that's the first remark. So now the second, uh, I will take new objects. I will take elements, uh, so Hermitian, I will write it L bar. Uh, Hermitian line model on X. So that, what does it mean? It means that L bar is consists first <coughs> of a line model on X and, uh, and second And uh, so norm is a smooth Hermitian metric on, L, on LC, which is a line bundle oh, say, say on LC, and LC is a line bundle OK, so first I have a totally arithmetic or 
algebraic geometric object on the scheme X, and I have some information which is of analytic nature, this Hermitian metric, on the complex variety X of C. So, uh, there is a slight subtlety about the meaning of smooth. So, if uh, X of C is, if X is, is smooth, uh, over, then if XQ is smooth so over the generic fibers, then X of C is a manifold, a complex manifold, and it's clear what a smooth metric means. Do, do I need to recall what a metric is? Uh, it's li like in first, uni first year uh, university class. All, all, uh, only people who answer such questions are those who don't need to. <laughs> to the, the, re the reminder. So nobody needs, okay, good. So if X of C is smooth, is a smooth manifold, then the, what the smooth metric is is clear. If uh, this is not smooth, then it's maybe more complete, uh, maybe uh, more, maybe not, uh, not standard. So I can always pretend that uh, locally X of C is embedded in some smooth complex manifold. And uh, the, the norm, uh, the, the metric is given by by the norm of local uh, trivialization of the line ball. And so I take a local trivialization, I look at its norm, maybe log of, log of it, and what I say is that this function is now smooth, and that means that it extends to a smooth function in a neighborhood of, and it, it works well. Okay, so that, that, the, that is the input, and maybe I will need... Okay, um, maybe uh, I need a notation, p cat of x, which is a abelian group of isometric classes of emission line moment. So that's an abelian group because I can multiply line models together. And if I have two line models, L1 and L2, endowed with Hermitian matrix, then the then tensor product has a natural uh, Hermitian metric. So now, uh, so, no, that's what if. Um, so I will take uh, so maybe the starting point of of the definition of heights in geometry is the following following theorem. I take L one bar, L n bar and. Um, there is a unique um, boy, I always say that. There is a unique family of linear maps, so that goes that takes. So a unique way to define uh, some inter analytic intersection number relative to, on d-dimensional uh, cycles. And the notation is arithmetic degree of arithmetic function classes of L1 bar, et cetera, LG bar against against this. So that's a notation. And so the, the dig hat and the C1 hat are just notations. I, I don't claim that they uh, represent, they, they do represent uh, 
actual stuff, but uh, I'm not interested in what it does represent, it's just notation. So that's a unique family of linear maps in that way, such that, uh, so for d in uh, zero n, such that, So uh, I need two conditions. The first one is an inductive condition. So it means that for every d, every z in x integral closed and dimension of z is d. And uh, every non-zero integer m every regular meromorphic section S um, so of L to the M restricted to Z. Yes, and it's not L, it's LG, the last one. one. That, no, for, for every such that, m times the arithmetic degree of c1 at l1 bar c uh, d minus 1 c1 hat of l d minus 1 bar against the divisor of s. No, I will write. So m times this is first of all the arithmetic degree of c1 at l1 bar c1 at l g minus 1 bar against the divisor of s plus integral on z of c of the log of norm of s minus 1 C1 of L1 bar, C1 of LG bar. So that's the basic formula. <coughs> so here, uh, so divisor of S. So is a divisor of S. So it's an element of Z D minus one of of Z. It's just uh, some uh, say V in Z. Dimension of V is D minus one of the, the order of vanishing of F or vanishing or, or order of pole of F. That's just the divisor of a section of a line normal. And C1, C1 of L1 bar, etc. is just, it's just uh, uh, the one on form on X of C associated with L1 bar. And uh, with the same uh, than, that, than before, if x is smooth, then that's real smooth form in the sense you imagine on a complex manifold. And if x of c is not smooth, uh, you can either try to define, but it's either possible to, to say what a smooth form on a singular complex space is, or to, to pretend that those forms only exist on the smooth locus of x. And then you need one more uh, assertion is that the product of these smooth forms will be integrable on the full space and moreover being integrable uh, against 
this function log of norm s minus one, which has singularities along the along the along the difference of s. So there is a, an implicit integrability, integrability condition that one needs to to verify. And then uh, the first condition tells you how to define this expression in dimension d once you know it in dimension d minus 1. But then you have to start from somewhere, and usually somewhere is dimension 0. And so in dimension 0, so what pro dimensional uh, cycle, it's really, it's, it's forced to be vertical, and it's necessarily a close point of a, a close point of the scheme X, and so it, li it lies in a, in a vertical, in some vertical fiber. So if G equals zero, G equals zero, Z, Z is a close point, uh, small Z of X, and the definition is arithmetic degree of nothing against Z is just logarithm of the cardinality of the residue field okay normalization uh, at the end so this long definition has been to uh, must be put in perspective with the classical way that degrees of subvarieties is defined if you have a variety of a field, maybe I should write it in a, with another color. What do you prefer, green or orange? For me, it's the same because I'm colorblind, so. Orange, <laughs> orange okay. And so this is orange, but this is green. Yeah. For me, it's the same. Uh, OK, so uh, usually for, for the degree, it's the same. You have a unique way to define degree with respect to, to classes like, uh, uh, the, the, if you have a, a D cycle on, on X, maybe a variety of a field. You have a unique way to define, so x is variety of our field. Okay, you have a unique way to define this, and the rules are just that uh, similar rules. It will be m times the degree of c1 l1, c1 lg minus lg against z will be the degree of c1 l1, c1 l g minus one against the divisor of, of z. And that's all. You have no other term. And the normalization in dimension zero is just that the degree of the, of the against nothing of z, which will be not the logarithm, the cardinality of the residue field, but the degree of the residue field over the ground field. Because the section is a, a section of line model, maybe not of LG. So okay, so I have line models. I take, uh, uh, of course, if they, I could take m, m equals one, but the idea here is just you take some hyperplane section of Z, and hyperplane section is governed by the last line model, and you you cut Z, uh, you get the divisor and you go on. And when you are in dimension zero, you take the, you count points according to the, to the degrees. So if the field is algebraically closed, they just one. But if your ground field is Q, then you count the point uh, square root of two with multiplicity two. So here in, in number theory, the, for heights, the situation is slightly more complicated because if I forget this term, I get a definition that doesn't work. I need this term for, for, for the theorem to, work, to hold. And uh, the reason for, for this 
for, for this term, is that in some sense, proper schemes of a Z are not really compact objects. There's a, there's a motto in Oracle of Geometry that schemes of a Z are not really compact because Z is not, spec Z is not compact. It, it, it lacks one place, the place at infinity. And so the goal of taking metrics and so on is to, to formally add this place at infinity and to twist all definitions, uh, to all classical definitions so that we get uh, something that makes sense and that is useful. And so the two answers is that first of all, it's possible to give a definition that makes sense. That's the discovery of Arakelov and then Gilles Soule. And for the setting of heights, it's rather faltings. That explains that one can uh, define heights using, using Arakelov geometry and using basically this, uh, this formula. And uh, for it's useful to number theory, uh, I mean, I will hope that the proof, the sketch of Vogelmoor's conjecture that I will give at the end of the talk will prove that I'm right. When a record of geometry emerged, it was apparently, there was apparently a hope that it would help to prove the Riemann hypothesis and stuff like that. Um, but uh, okay, we have to be modest in our goals if you want to do something effective. Um, mm -hmm. So I gave the so I gave the proper attributions, but so maybe the names that should be there are uh, Arakelov, Gilles Soulet, Faltings. So basically, for the Arakelov seventy four, explained how to do arithmetic intersection theory when X is an arithmetic surface, dimension two. Gillian Soule, uh, in the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, uh, theory, and it needed uh, an amazing amount of work in any dimension. So it's around. And uh, Faltings, more basically at once, uh, showed that using uh, Arcade of geometry, uh, one could define the notion of heights of any varieties, any subschemes so with, with a, such a definition. And, uh, uh, and he proved an important theorem. He proved a, 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 he proved a conjecture of length using this, this formalism. There are also, uh, uh, if you attended the lecture last week, you may have noticed that probably uh, Soule uh, imposed that his schemes were regular. And so that, that is because in classical uh, intersection theory, if you want to intersect cycles of, uh, cycles of some, some dimensions in a, in a variety, and a drug variety, and uh, defines this intersection as a, a rational equivalence class of, of cycles, then you need to put a smoothness assumption on your variety. It, it's not necessary, otherwise it doesn't work, or you, you would get uh, cycles whose, uh, whose product would have coefficients one half and so on. So it's, it's necessary to, if you, have a, if you want a full intersection theory uh, on a variety to impose that the variety is, is regular. In, in this case, we are doing something much weaker, but that is, we are not uh, intersecting cycles of any dimension. Z has maybe a, have any dimension, but we cut one by one by uh, hypersurfaces. And so the, the, what, what happens is that cutting with a hypersurface is much easier than intersecting uh, cycles of uh, arbitrary co-dimensions. And especially in that case, one does not need a uh, hypothesis. So uh, it's interesting to look at what happens if the cycle Z is vertical. Sorry? There is a button. And I can push the button and great. Ah, okay, so I'll be tricked. Uh, Okay, but uh, for, for the moment, it's nice to have the two, two formulas. So maybe one remark is that so 
So if z is vertical uh, and above above p, then the arithmetic degree if you try to understand what happens in this case, we are cutting so you are using this inductive definition and then the divisor of s will always will also be vertical and above the prime number p and the geometric term the complex term will be empty because if z is vertical z of c is empty z, z, the generic fiber of z is, is empty and so z of c is empty and so this integral is zero so it shows that in this case the inductive formula is much simpler. It's just the first term, the left, right, the left hand side equals the first term of the right hand side. And that's exactly the inductive definition in the geometric case. So we'll get that this is the degree of a C1 of maybe L1, and I could restrict, it, restrict this to XFP, C1 of LD restricted to x of p against z. But that's OK. The two formulas match inductively. But at the end, in one case, I have log of cardinality of the residue field. And the other case, I have the degree of the residue field over fp. And so the relation between the two is just that I need to multiply this by log p. So uh, <coughs> the theorem is not easy to prove. Of course, uh, since I give an inductive formula, if there is a, the unicity is, is clear. But what is not clear is existence. Because for example, I, ca I, could, I could take, well, not for example, but I, I can take, I have many choices of regular meromorphic si sections. And uh, it's not clear in principle that whatever choice of section, I will get the same, same answer. Because if I change my sections, uh, the first term, the first inductive term is modified, but the complex term is modified as well. So it's, one has to prove that something matches, and that's not so easy. And uh, also, there is a second part of the theorem which is, which is not easy, and everything, the proof of all of this is work is uh, basically the proof that uh, intersection theory of first, cl first classes of line balls on, on schemes uh, is, is well defined. So uh, it's commutativity and so on. So, I have so moreover, so that's uh, moreover after the, the theorem, is that uh, this expression maybe plural, these expressions are uh, uh, multilinear and symmetric in uh, L1 bar, Ln bar. So I can switch them if I, if I need. And and only depend on their classes in P cat Higgs. So that's why uh, there is this C1 hat. But, uh, OK. Is that watch? It's already okay. Good. This I said. Mm -hmm. uh, I will write examples on this lab. Yeah, 
maybe it's only one example. Uh, one example I, I need not write is the case of dimension zero because it's already there. So I will go next and take equals one. So then uh, um, I have two cases, and the, the, case, the vertical case is, is clear because the vertical place is just uh, I have a curve. So then Z Z in XFP is a curve, and the, the arithmetic degree of C1 L bar against Z is just the degree of Z with respect to L on the special fiber times log P. So that's something clear. And the second case is, is Z is horizontal. So then I have said that uh, Z is a uh, the risky closure of its generic fiber, and Z will be a close point of the generic fiber. If Z is, I assume that Z is this integral, only one component. And so this, this close point will have a residue field, F, which is a finite extension of Q. And uh, what happens is that I can take, for example, the ring of integers of OF And using the evaluative cr criterion of properness, there is a, a map epsilon z from spec OF to x, and so that the image of generic point is the, just to extend. I have the spec F. To, to X with image Z and extend it separately. So now uh, what, what I can do is look at epsilon Z upper star L bar, so the inverse image of the Hermitian line model L bar pulled back to the, the scheme spec OF. And so this is Something like. And you probably learned last week that such objects have an arithmetic degree. And the arithmetic degree of this object, if you look at the definition, is just the arithmetic degree of C1 hat of L bar. And maybe the reason is on the blackboard. Uh, essentially, because um, usually the formula for this is something for uh, this way the logarithm of the cardinality of. like that. I have nothing, uh, what do I mean, what do I say?
je dis une bêtise. Uh, no, okay, it's not. It's g equals one, but here it's not. Uh, here it's d minus one. So I have no, here you know, this product is 1, so I just need to integrate log of norm of s minus 1 on z of c. And z of c, from that point of view, is just, it's not just the one point, one complex point, but it's a full set of all the conjugates of the full points. Because all the morphisms from spec, from spec c to, to x to, to z is really all morphism from spec c to, to z. It corresponds exactly to all to all embeddings of f into c. Okay, I need to. Okay. And uh, now I will take back my blackboard. Uh, maybe uh, too, too, too bad. Okay. Uh, so one comment is probably, I hope you have seen last week that this expression, the arithmetic degree of epsilon z l bar, uh, is, the, is the height of the point z with respect to this line model, at least up to certain normalization that we will come back to later. Okay, so that explains why those, those stuff are, are heights. Uh, um, but I just want to write down the projection formula. So the idea is to take, you take a morphism x prime to x of objects as above. And uh, I have some emission line on the bar here, and I can pull it back to a emission line model f upper star L bar there. And if I take a cycle z, or may say z prime, in x prime, we, I want to compute this arithmetic intersection numbers with respect to that emission line model in terms of the arithmetic intersection numbers of some cycles there relative to, to L bar. And so the, the formula is that, so I take z, z in um, uh, z in x prime, in, Integral and closed, and dimension d, and so so the claim is that this number is equal to. So uh, uh, for me, uh, C1 and C1 hat is just a notation. It's just there because I don't want to write L bar, but I could write L bar. But it's supposed to refer to that there is a char group on the scheme, and there is an arithmetic char group on this scheme, uh, X, and that line models, line models, uh, on x have a class in the uh, first, if the char group of co in co-dimension one, and that the Hermitian line bundle have a class in the arithmetic char group in co-dimension one. 
But since I don't use arithmetic trial group explicitly, I don't need to introduce them. OK, but that, uh, that's the reason for, for the appearance of C1 and C1 hat in the formulas. OK? But just to view, you can really view them at, uh, as just symbols. Even the deg hat is not a, as a matter of fact, one can define a more refined object, which would be that, which would be some uh, uh, cycles, some uh, cycle in some element of some arithmetic trial group in dimension zero, and it would be the, the arithmetic degree of this, this cycle. But, I don't need to to define this cycle. So, in that part, uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting to observe that in classical intersection theory, you have one one part of the theory that is essentially interested with degrees. Everything that holds only up to numerical equivalence. The basic notion you need is to, to know what's the degree of the cycle, um, and that's all. But there are some parts of algebraic geometry, especially in enumerative geometry, that needs to use more, maybe not only enumerative geometry, but that needs to use more, more refined objects. So not the class with, with respect to numerical equivalence, but really the class with, with respect to rational equivalence or maybe some other equivalence. Relation. And that's the same in Arakalov geometry. The part of Arakalov geometry in where I'm used to live, and uh, which I we try to describe in these lectures, is only interested about numerical or arithmetic intersection theory. But there is also a part of Arakalov intersection theory that is, that is much more refined and uh, that is also used, for example, uh, I think that in the work of Mayuro and Rosler, probably they use more refined invariants. In any case, it has not been uh, as much as developed as in the standard algebraic geometry. But that's what. So the formula now I can write it is that the arithmetic degree of C1 hat with respect so with respect to the direct image, it's not F. Maybe, uh, maybe F was a flat. I don't know whether. I, I put a definition for the morphism of a form X of a spec Z. Yeah, it was called F as well, but anyway, that's not the same F. Uh, so F upper star Z is just, is just zero if the dimension of F of Z is strictly smaller than D and is, it's equal to the degree so it's just a standard definition of uh, an image and so the f has to be proper the standard definition for the for, for the image of a, of a cycle if the dimension goes down, then you put zero. And if the dimension stays the same, stays the same, then what happens is that the image of a something irreducible closed will be irreducible and closed. And uh, so if you look at the extension of function fields, uh, the, uh, the morphism F induces, it will be a finite extension. And you put in front of, as a coefficient in front of this cycle, the degree of this extension, finite extension, okay? Okay, good, so now. So, This is the formula I, I will need, but it's, it's very uh, it's important to, to write 
down the authors of uh, remarkable people, remarkable people by G both Gilles and Soule, 1994, I, be I believe, where the, the three author authors really studied the, the, the notion of heights in oracle of geometry, either following this definition or using classical uh, arithmetic intersection theory. So for example, uh, it's just to, to link the lecture of Soule with, with mine. If, if say n egal equals dimension of x and x is regular, then uh, These numbers, this, this object exists in the arithmetic trial group of co, co, so co dimension n of x. And this is the intersection product. of Gilles Soule. And now it is true that uh, that what I, I denote by arithmetic degree of C1 hat of L1 bar Ln bar against x itself is indeed the arithmetic degree of this uh, arithmetic cycle. Okay. And maybe uh, if you want to read the paper of Boss Gilles Soule uh, someday, it's important to, to it's, maybe it's useful to know that you don't have a simple definition like that for any in any co-dimension, because if you want to put Z here, uh, you would need to take a product of D, if, if, if dimension of, uh, of Z is D, you only take D arithmetic emission line below. So, so you have C1 hat L1 bar, C1 hat LD bar. And so this is something in the arithmetic trope group in co-dimension N minus D. And to get something in codimension n, you need to do something more, more. And you could say, I want to cut it with z, but z itself is not an arithmetic cycle. Because arithmetic cycles in the theory of Gilles Soule is made of a cycle like z plus some green, some, uh, some green current on z. So you need to choose a green current. And there is a choice. And if you take another green current, you will get another number. So there are rules. In some cases, there are rules to, for example, you could there are some varieties where there is a canonical choice of green current. So in some cases, that makes a, a useful definition. But in general, that doesn't work. So you need to twist, again, this definition. So for example, pull back to Z and so on. But, but anyway, that shows the relation between arithmetic intersection theory and heights, maybe arithmetic intersection numbers, as explained in the, as given in the theorem. OK? Good. This is the end of the first section. And uh, I have 10 sections and five hours, and I have used one hour. No, 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 I have. On a commencé à quelle heure Donc j'ai encore une demi-heure ou c'était qu'une heure ou c'était une heure et demie Ah, ok, so good. So, so <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's a good time to stop. I mean. <laughs> Je repartais pour une demi-heure. <laughs>